Tonight, Samsung unveils the Galaxy S5 plus new wearables, Nokia's first Android phones, Firefox's $25 device, and are selfies responsible for lice infestations? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 30 for Monday, February 24th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by iFixit. iFixit makes electronics repair easy with all the parts and tools you'll need, plus free repair guides. For $10 off your purchase of $50 or more, go to iFixit.com slash twit and enter the code TN2 at checkout. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right to the tech feed. Okay, today at Mobile World Congress, Samsung announced its Galaxy S5, a slightly larger upgrade from the S4 at 5.1 inches, but with a 1080p Super AMOLED panel that looks almost identical to the S4's screen. On the back, Samsung has replaced the S4's plastic battery cover with a new soft-touch finish the company is calling modern glam. The 5S's charging port is now USB 3.0 and has an integrated port cover for waterproofing, and the home key now features an integrated fingerprint scanner. The S5 is launching with Android 4.4.2 KitKat on April 11th. But that's not all. Samsung's new Gear Fit is the latest fitness wearable announcement from the company that also displays notifications from your phone, like messages and incoming calls. Though no microphone and no camera, a call would need to be answered via Bluetooth. A pedometer, a heart rate sensor, a sleep tracker, stopwatch, timer, and media player remote round out the features, but it's a real-time operating system, incompatible with both iOS and Android, and at least at this point, no third-party apps. Samsung didn't reveal pricing yet, but said that the Gear Fit would arrive in April and be cheaper than the Gear 2, which was announced over the weekend. Well, Nokia has officially entered the Android market with three new smartphones, the X, the X Plus, and the XL, aimed at emerging markets in countries such as India, where the Windows Phone platform, which Nokia adopted a few years ago in place of Symbian, doesn't work as well on lower-end devices. But Nokia already has some competition. Mozilla has announced it will soon offer a $25 phone called the Flame that runs HTML5 apps and features a dual-core Qualcomm 1.2 gigahertz Snapdragon CPU. In addition to the Flame, Mozilla announced yesterday seven higher-end Firefox OS smartphones and several tablets to beef up Firefox OS's presence in its current 15 markets. But not to be left out in the cold alleyways of Barcelona's tapas bars, HTC announced its Desire 816. This is a flagship mid-range phone the company isn't pricing yet, but will support both LTE and HSPA+. A 5.5-inch 720 display puts it squarely in phablet category with a 13-megapixel rear camera and a 5-megapixel front or selfie camera. Yes, they're actually calling them that now. On the inside is a 1.6 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 400 system on a chip, 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, 8 gigabytes of internal storage, and micro SD expansion up to 128 gigabytes. It's also the first HTC phone to take a nano SIM. China launch is planned for next month with a global launch set for April. Broadcom is tackling the future of smartphones by announcing the BCM4354, I really love that name, system on a chip, the first advanced 5G Wi-Fi combo chip. This will double throughput for faster video and music downloads on a wireless device. It makes use of interference to improve overall bandwidth. The company says power efficiency is boosted up to 25% over Wi-Fi, and the chip increases wireless coverage by up to 30% compared to current chips. It uses the Wi-Fi 802.11ac protocol to transfer data. The company is also producing transmit beamforming technology that gets better rates and range in congested environments like a sporting event. And last week, the company announced a new LTE platform chip set aimed at the sub $300 smartphone market. Well, coming up, lice infestations caused by selfies? I knew it! We'll let you know who's most at risk. And next, Marshall Kirkpatrick joins us. We'll cover ye old Zuckerberg keynote at Mobile World Congress. But first, 
We would like to thank iFixit, the makers of the ProTech Toolkit, for sponsoring this episode of TN2. The ProTech Toolkit contains 70 tools. It helps you with almost any repair or any project. It includes iFixit's 54-bit driver kit with standard specialty and security bits, safe precision tweezers, an anti-static wrist strap, and opening tools to get inside a phone or a notebook or a tablet or even a game console. It's lightweight, it's compact, it's the gold standard for how electronics work from garage hackers to the CIA to the FBI and is used by repair technicians everywhere. It's backed by a one-year warranty and the ProTech Toolkit is only $64.95. With iFixit, you can fix it yourself. Visit iFixit.com for all the repair parts and tools you'll need, plus free repair guides. Enter the code TN2 at checkout to save $10 off any purchase of $50 or more. That's iFixit.com slash twit, and use that code TN2. All right, joining us now is Marshall Kirkpatrick, the CEO at Little Bird and formerly co-editor and lead writer at Read Write Web. Now, Read Write. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Well, I'm glad to hear it. So are you ready to talk Zuckerberg keynote? I'm always ready to talk Zuckerberg. Me too. Uh, and he, you know, he can't stay out of the news. Okay, so he presented uh, at Mobile World Congress earlier today. He had some choice things to say about, of course, the WhatsApp purchase that everyone's interested in. He thinks that WhatsApp is well worth more than the $19 billion that Facebook paid, even though we've got a lot of people possibly balking at that price. What do you think? Do you think he's right? Oh, I like his vision of partnering with WhatsApp and extending lightweight internet access all around the world. Uh, and obviously, he's putting a—he's more than just putting $19 billion behind it. That board seat and all the Facebook shares, uh, that is a, that's a serious, strong move. Um, and I, I think it's pretty exciting. Turns out uh, WhatsApp has partnered uh, with international telecoms almost as much as Facebook has. Uh, so though I had never used the app before the news went live, lots and lots of other people sure have. So do you think that the, the talk of uh, WhatsApp, which is going to be offering uh, voice transfer, not just, not just the, the texting and the, and, the, and the pictures later on this year, helps broaden its appeal. You and I are both of the camp that say, hmm, never used it before. Uh, I don't know if that's if, if we're really the target market though. Yeah, hundreds of millions of people seem to love it all around the world. It's great for an international world. We here in the US you know, are, are just a little fraction. Zuckerberg has done a bunch of things for the digital divide here in the United States supporting broadband. Uh, and now this looks like a, a big move that might not affect you and I that much, uh, but it'll uh, probably make a big impact internationally. So what about Facebook's internet.org initiative? That's something that uh, Mark Zuckerberg has always obviously been very vocal about. Clearly, Facebook benefits from more people being online that can then use Facebook, but there's also a lot of good things about that as well. How does the WhatsApp deal play into that? Well, I think that uh, since telecoms around the world have some familiarity with WhatsApp already, they've been some of them have been bundling it like they do Facebook. Um, that that's that's just all the more oomph behind the initiative. So I think that you know, free Facebook, free WhatsApp, free Twitter. Oh, probably not. Uh, <laughs> would be would be super awesome uh, for people all around the developing world and and elsewhere. So speaking of Facebook, we heard today that uh, the company has decided to retire the at Facebook.com email service, which has been part of Facebook for some time, but nobody really used it. In fact, it confused a lot of people and apparently it wasn't worth keeping alive. What did Facebook get wrong? Well, I went and, and looked at Little Bird and discovered a, a bunch of email experts for this story and found that back when that Facebook story or when that Facebook email went live, even those email experts were super confused by the interface and the spam rules and the folders. And um, it, it sounded like it was just way too complicated and it was foisted on people like a, like a Facebook privacy policy change without anybody's knowing or or uh, voting for it. And kind of competing against its messenger service, which Facebook has always put front and center anyway. 
Well, they integrated the two of them together too, and yet it was a, all about forwarding to another email address, your your primary email address. Um, yeah, it it, uh, it sounded like it was a big mess of of uh, of complications, and and apparently even Facebook is ready to admit that it didn't catch on. So you take some big gambles. Sometimes you pay $19 billion for a WhatsApp or you try to bring free Facebook to the world. And sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. Well, Marshall Kirkpatrick, thanks so much for joining us. You mentioned uh, the experts you were talking uh, to uh, via Little Bird. Tell us what Little Bird is and how people can find out more about the uh, company. Thanks. So uh, Little Bird maps communities online all around any kind of topic and helps businesses find the most influential, trusted people uh, to engage with for marketing and sales. And we've been building it for a little while now, and I hope people come and check it out. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Please come back soon. Thanks for having me. All right. Marshall Kirkpatrick, CEO of Little Bird, formerly of Read White, Right Web. I'll never get that right. It's a good thing you've moved on. Now I can too. Thanks, All right. Sir. Finally, are selfies causing head lice infestations? You might say that's crazy, but that's what Marcy McQuillan from knitlessnoggins.com says. Isn't that a great URL? She says she's seen a tenfold increase of infestations in the last few years, primarily in teens, and she thinks it's due to touching their heads together to take selfies. She adds that it's become an addiction and that selfies are fun, but the consequences are real. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv with some feedback, suggestions, anything. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Until then, I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.